good morning welcome to yellow door urban homestead um, i am asia i am growing on um a small plot in my backyard in a urban setting um and if you've watched any of my videos you know you can find me on ig um at miss asia spratley to see the new happenings and the things going on i'm out with the chickens this morning um, and I'm going to give you a full garden tour. So here we are with the ladies. Uh, this is the strawberry patch. These strawberries were grown from um, a store purchased strawberry. Like I was about to throw strawberries away and I was like, wait, let's see if I can grow these. Um, and I've gotten a pretty good harvest. This is the first year. I did not pull the flowers. I know that's a thing. You know, they say pull the flowers, but when I did my research, store-bought strawberries are normally June-bearing, um, and I wanted some strawberries this year. So had I pulled them, I would not have gotten another flash of strawberries uh, from my research. That's what I think. No, no, no. Go away. Go away. Actually, digging up. Um, if this was in the dead of, you know, season, the growing season, they would not be in here. They would be over there on the other side of the fence. But we're close to the end and just kind of letting them have some fun, I guess. Um, so I have two beds that I made this year. Also, the Japanese beetles are not my friend this year. Literally all the beans that I've had, they have put holes in. And they're even starting to eat the beans. So, those will be pulled today. Uh, initially, I didn't know what I was gonna do with this bed for fall, because I am gonna grow in fall. Um, but, these carrots are from the spring, and they stunted really bad, and I just left them because I didn't know what to do with this bed anyway, um, because it wasn't really producing, and they started growing. So, I'm thinking I'm gonna make this my carrot bed but I am not completely sure about that <laughs> just yet. Um, if you look this way, you have, uh-oh, I'm stepping on my, what was uh, labeled as ground cherries. When I posted it to Instagram, people were like, is that a tomatillo? My ground cherries aren't that big. So it may be a ground cherry, it may be a tomatillo. It was, it was labeled as, Tomatillo pineapple ground cherry. So I thought it was a ground cherry, but I could be wrong. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Go, 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 go. Yes, that's how I feel too. <laughs> um, you know, strawberries are perennial. I don't want them to ruin those. So this is pepper row. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I struggled so bad with these peppers. I started them way too early. Um, and they got really stressed in the house. I want to say they got aphids. I'm not even sure how you get. They were fighting. <laughs> Establishing pecking order. They are 16 weeks this week. So I haven't gotten any eggs out of them um, yet. But anyway, um, I struggled really bad with the peppers. Um, and so that's how they ended up growing in bags because I was like, I have to find a way to get them out, but also be able to bring them in when it's too cold. Um, and so that's how they ended up in bags, but they have been great producers this year. So I still won't start them as early as I did last year, um, but I will grow them in bags. I'm also not gonna snip them um, at the top because they're just really short and I don't like that. I like the larger plants like these two i grew these these are also pepper plants that i grew um these are from store purchase uh peppers that i saved the seed from and i was like in the thick of growing and getting things planted and i forgot to snip these this is what i prefer so i won't be snipping my peppers okay so i've also started planting for fall uh, so you have peas on the trellis, uh, which peas aren't going to last all the way through fall. The leaves are frost hardy, but the pods are not. And so with that being said, um, I'll let them grow until our first hard frost and then I'll pull them 
and I'll pull the trellis. Um, I also planted beets and they are uh, planted really closely because I don't actually want the beets. I just want the greens. Um, I don't like beets. Well, I pro if, a, if a beet happens to show up, I will try it. But in the past, I have not liked beets uh, from the store anyway. Uh-oh, got my knees wet. Uh, these are kohlrabi. Um, and so I put those out as well. I planted them kind of close last year. They did pretty well. Um, so I'm going to do that this year too. These are potatoes. And so are these. Uh, I just did them probably less than seven days ago. I planted them so they're not up. Um, but you should be able to get a fall harvest in zone 7B. And so that's what I am going to try for. Um, also, there's more cool Robbie. Something's eating them. I think it's a probably an army worm or something. Um, there's some kind of worm eating them. Uh, that's the only thing about, you know, you have to plant fall plants in the late summer. And there's still a pest issue in late summer. Um, other thing that's in this bed that I haven't pulled are my melons. Cucumbers were on this trellis initially. Um, my melons, it hasn't been a great melon year. Um, but I'm going to let it go as long as I can. And the tendril here is brown, but the melon is, I'm still letting it go. I'm hoping for it to get a little bit bigger. Um, there's another one. This is a tiger melon, which we've gotten one of these this year. And my daughter loved it. She said it tastes like cantaloupe. I don't like cantaloupe, so I did not try it. Um, this is a cantaloupe, but it was really small. Um, I don't know what happened with my melons this year, but for her, she won't mind if it's small and no one else is gonna eat them. So like I mentioned, the uh, Japanese beetle is enjoying all beans. If it's a bean plant, it's gonna eat them. Um, <laughs> and so I'm gonna pull uh, these today. Um, I have okra that's still producing. There were three plants. Um, there's another one, and then there's one down here. This one didn't produce much of anything this year. Um, and I don't eat okra. I was growing the okra for my aunt, but you, not you, I <laughs> didn't get a lot at one time to even share with her. So I am not, I'm thinking I'm not gonna grow that next year, but we'll see. Um, the other thing is we have the trellis that has beans. It has, uh, birdhouse gourd on it and it also has loofah. I didn't get one loofah <laughs> and there's a one birdhouse gourd, one. Yeah, so with that being said, I am um, gonna pull this trellis as well today. Um, and so the zinnias were amazing this year. I plan to plant way more zinnias next year, like a lot. Um, I'm even thinking that this bed, I'm probably going to do carrots in it this year um, for fall. Initially, I said I wasn't going to use it at all, but I think I'm going to do carrots because the carrots at the end, which I'll show you up close in a little bit, um, are from the spring. Early spring, I put them in. They stunted and I just left them because I was like, pretty sure I'm not going to do anything with this bed. They started growing. So I know that carrots will grow in that bed. Um, so that's what I'm going to do for fall. Um, so yeah, I got a lot to do today. Um, let's see, oh, the peppers. This is my golden Marconi. I've gotten one off of it. They're beautiful. They're huge and they're beautiful. It has a hole in it. There's ants coming out. Oh no. Um, there's another one there that started growing. Um, all of the hot peppers, this is a habanero that I just broke off, unfortunate. Um, I'm trying to let this stuff stay go red because I want to make hot sauce. Um, the hot, the jalapenos, I had hoped would get a little bit bigger on my second, where's that one I saw? On my second round, um, but they're pretty much the same size. They were still delicious, so I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Um, yep. So this is a dwarf kale. Um, I do love kale. I, I didn't before I started gardening, but I do love kale. Um, this is a dwarf blue kale that something has been eating. 
Um, once you start to plant your fall vegetables in the summer, make sure you check them. Um, if you are an organic grower, you're going to want to make sure you check them because the pest, uh, it's, uh, you know, mostly the army worms um, at, at the early season. And then the butterfly, the um, white butterfly moth, those, you know, they lay their eggs and stuff too. So anyway, this is a uh, Swiss chard. I do enjoy Swiss chard. Two of them weren't very healthy when I put them in and you can see they are not this one. These are fine, these two. So I'm gonna just direct sow some seeds there um, for to replace those two because I do like Swiss chard. I like to put it in soups and different things. Um, eggplant, let's talk about all of these eggplant. There's one here. There's <laughs> there's four here. One, two, three, four. There's four, yes. One, two, three, four, five. No, there's five here. And then if we come over here, there's four more. I don't eat eggplant that much. <laughs> I will not be growing that many eggplants next year. I maybe will have two plants and it will be the skinnier varieties because I did not love the larger varieties. And now we come to the herb section, which all of my herbs are pretty much in pots. I have echinacea in the ground, but all of the herbs pretty much are in pots. So it's a lot of mint. Um, I can't wait to try this lemongrass, which I thought was not gonna even grow. Um, that smells so good. Uh, the lemon balm over here in this plant pot, yeah. I've pulled that so many times and I don't need, have any more need for lemon balm. So I'm just gonna let that go and do what it does until the end of the season. Um, also the comfrey, which isn't a herb. I use it for fertilizing right now, um, but I cut this way back and that's grown back. Um, but I also watch uh, Stiver's Homestead and they use it uh, in a salve. So I may try a salve with that um, I don't know if I'm gonna do it this year, but maybe next year. Um, we have, let's move over, uh, chamomile. I've been pulling those flowers and letting them dry for some tea. Um, we got some lavender flowers growing too. Where are we? Here we go. So I'm excited about that because if you are on Instagram, which by the way, you can find me at Instagram at Miss Asia Spratley. I don't know if I said that already. If I did, another shameless plug. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was struggling really bad with my herb section. Um, I don't really grow in pots, I guess. Um, or I didn't do the research about growing in pots. And so once I did some research and realized like you really have to water them, you really have to feed them, like you have to be cognizant, um, that's what I started getting. But at first there were one and two sprigs in every pot. And I was like, this is the pits. So that's what you have here. You have the herb section, eggplant, and a little bit of basil in this spot. Um, and then if you walk over a little bit, you have blueberry row, this blueberry bush that cost me 30 some dollars, I think, is dying. <laughs> that blueberry bush up there and the one at the end cost me $5 and they are not dying. They're actually regrowing leaves for next year. <laughs> so I'm gonna wait and see if Lowe's has a clearance this year and I'm gonna replace this one because yeah, it's dying. Um, there's some herbs in some of the Dollar Tree pots, stackables that everybody was running to. I'm gonna work on a way to make that a little more sturdy. Um, because it was not sturdy this year. And I was like, I am not going to put myself through that falling over and me having to pick it up over and over in a year. So I just kind of, I did strawberries and herbs in those. And so that's what's in these pots right here. All right, so I didn't do as many flowers as I probably should have, but look at these beautiful hollyhocks. Like they just started blooming like a week or so ago. Um, and they were all the way down. We've had a lot of rain and not just rain, like literally storms. So you can see it falling. <laughs> I lifted it up and like kind of just tucked it behind this tomato plant. Um, Cause I still want them, they're beautiful. This 
<laughs> is a weed that I just let grow, which I'm probably going to uh, regret doing that because those seeds are gonna fall everywhere. Um, yeah, it's all right, it's nature. Uh, so remember I said I have an echinacea like in the ground. That's one. There's a daisy um, milkweed back there. This is a weed, actually it's like a tree trying to grow. Um, and then I don't remember what this is. It hasn't flowered yet, but anyway, these are all perennials. So they'll come back. I'll uh, mulch this area once they die out or do whatever, and they'll be fine. This is uh, this is tomatoes that's still producing that I st that I want to pull. <laughs> I'm gonna top them today, though. Like at the end of the day, I'm gonna top them. Like that all goes together. Uh oh, I think I broke something. I did. I said I was gonna top it anyway. So um, that all goes together. So. It's tomatoes that's still producing that I want to pull. Uh, that's a sunflower that also, as soon as I cut it off, um, they keep producing. This one is done. The birds will come and get that. But, and I, and I try to let them go because I want some stuff to self seed next year. See, the birds will come and grab it. Anyway, um, more tomatoes that are still producing that I just wanna that I just wanna pull. <laughs> Look at those. Um, but yeah, I I just wanna pull everything. <laughs> but everything's still producing, so I'm gonna leave it. Uh here's another bean trellis. That's the entrance to the garden, which I love. Um, yeah, and so it's beans on there. There were purple potted pole beans on there. Um, and, and there's a bunch of them. There's some large ones that I'm letting stay to, I was hoping, um, dry on the vine, but we'll see what happens there. So I can save the seeds, but the beetles have also gotten to those. Um, and then on the other side, when you come in is the asparagus, uh, bed and that's looking pretty awesome. Like this is the first year I put it in this year. Um, look how thick that one is. So I think next year um, when we can pick a few and only eat a few, we may be okay. There's more back there. Everything's nice and thick. So I'm hoping, I'm hopeful. Um, I'm going to mow this down. I'm not going to mow it down. I'm going to cut it down. <laughs> and I'm going to mulch it for fall. And then in early spring, we'll, I'll, I'll uncover it and start hoping that it grows. So this is my orchard area. Um, this is, right now, <laughs> it is Tomato Alley. So the deal with these, and I don't know if I've told YouTube, but I know Instagram knows, is these were plants that were in pots and they weren't thriving. And God, please don't pay attention to this pool that we're gonna try to get together today. Um, we just didn't keep up with it. It's, it's gross. I'm pretty sure there's frogs and tadpoles in there right now. Anyway, um, and they didn't die. <laughs> like they were struggling and I was like, oh, they're not gonna make it, but I'm gonna just leave them over here, see what happens. They didn't die. And so I ended up with, I don't know how many tomato plants. I also have tomato volunteers. Um, when I started making this area, that's a volunteer right there, but there's a lot of them. When I started making this area, which is gonna be um, for fruit bushes and trees, um, I threw out food and everything in it just to get it ready, start to cultivate it, start to nourish it. Um, and the tomato seeds sprouted. So I don't even know what kind of seeds they are. They're just like from food. And my mom saves her food for me too. So it's not like it was just my food and I know what kind of tomatoes I eat. But anyway, um, so right now it's where these tomatoes are still going strong. Like right here, this is a... Oh, you can't see it. I can't get a good picture because of the way I'm holding the camera. Anyway, that's a black elephant and I didn't get a black elephant at all over in the actual garden. So I'm going to let those go. Um, I believe these are black cherry. Um, we got some Brad's Atomic Grape in there. 
um we got some paste tomatoes so this is like the jungle of tomatoes right now and i'm just letting it go um but i did get the whoa grapevine in this is muscadine grapes um which is supposed to be really good for hot humid uh weather and that's what we have here in the summer for sure i am going to connect this to t-post um i'm not putting big big uh posts in the ground I, i'm just i don't have that kind of space so i'll just keep figuring it out but i'm pretty sure i can grow these grapes on a vine without having to do that and so that's what i'm gonna try further down you have some more volunteer tomatoes that actually have tomatoes on them don't know what they are but it just smells like a tomato plant when you walk through here it's like that's a tomato plant anyway um i have my moringa trees have not done a thing with this moringa but i hear that it is a superfood so i am gonna start to pull them and dry them and put them into a um make them into a, a, a dust a powder not a dust a powder and start using it um, i don't think it has a really any taste per se i think it's just a good um nutrients you can add nutrients um here it's raspberry bush just put that in not too long um this is blackberry in which that blackberry was a bare root and i put it in a pot in early spring maybe it just never came back to it <laughs> <laughs> but it survived at least a small piece of it survived and it's thriving down here too i put in some rose bushes which honestly just want rose water <laughs> but also they're beautiful this is an avocado that i started from avocado seed which avocado are not hardy to 7b i could take them in the house i'm not gonna do that they're gonna it's gonna die at the end of the year there's probably like four of them out here just because i wanted to propagate something in the winter and have anything else to do so there's a bunch of them um and then there's one more pepper plant that i thought was going to kick the bucket but i've gotten lots of purple um peppers out of it so all right the sun is coming out oh ooh, glistening on my skin right here is where i save water so there's four trash cans there's also the bin I'm trying to figure out how to move my hand um where we where i compost um the wheelbarrow and uh, other few other things and that's all set on um i don't know if you can see it yes there you go it's set on pallets i went to lowe's and got pallets because back there the water pools when it rains and um so i didn't want to have to walk through that all the time even though i have boots uh right here there's a few more tomato plants that's in bags that started they were in the walkway really but they started needing more support so i put them here because they can lean on the greenhouse speaking speaking of greenhouses uh my fall plants are in the greenhouse um it's been warm i don't want to say hot well no it's been hot um it's not been very sunny so i put the um shade cloth over them just as a little more protection in case it got too sunny. Um, but a lot of these are gonna end up in the garden today, honestly, cause that's why I'm pulling everything that I'm pulling. Come through zinnias, okay? <laughs> the zinnias were so beautiful this year. Um, but between the zinnias and the dahlias, like I'm gonna plant so many of those next year. Like it's gonna be flowers everywhere. Um, I, I, this is my first year trying, you know, to incorporate flowers and I didn't do the best job with it. They're just kind of sporadically placed in the, around the garden. But next year I'm going to have a whole plan for these flowers because they were beautiful. Um, all right. So a little more fall planting. These are curly kale. Let's see if we can go this way. That's curly kale. This is also kale. It's a white, that white variety. I can't remember the name of it right now. And then there's a red Russian, uh, which looks very much like the white one. Hope I didn't get that mixed up. <laughs> um, and then, oh my God, there's tomatoes that are still producing. They're not very tasty though. Those aren't tasty and neither are those. So it's a chance that those are gonna get pulled today. And 
if you follow me on Instagram, you know I didn't label things as I should have. And so I don't even know which varieties those are to decide that I don't want them uh, next year. Okay, so my face looks ashy. It's not ashy. I went fishing last week, which I love to do, and I could not find my hat. I am a black girl that burns in the sun. <laughs> and so that's what's going on here and everything is about to start peeling. So I'm not ashy. I just don't have a way to not make it start peeling. Stop peeling. Um, and, and like sunscreen doesn't work. All right, I haven't tried all the sunscreens in the world but I've tried a lot of sunscreen, even the one that's made for black people and it doesn't, doesn't work. And so I don't know if my neck, yep. So I break out in hives and I get sunburn when I'm in the sun too long and there's no shade for me. And that's what happened last week when I couldn't find, when I couldn't find my hat. So just so you know, <laughs> okay. We got a cucamelon bush back here uh vine with little cucumelons on it i don't like them i don't like cucumelons they taste like watermelon rind they taste like watermelon rind and they take over everything like i'm always out here moving them putting them back where they're supposed to be i will not be growing them next year they weren't even good like i don't i don't like them um they aren't good to me i have decided that i need to work on saying what isn't good or what doesn't you know like it's disgusting it's disgusting to me but you may like them and cucumelons are really cute to grow um i'm just not going to because i didn't like the taste and they take over everything um straw flowers these open and shut they open and shut when it gets really hot they open which i don't have any that's open right now i don't think um and then when it cools down they shut they're very beautiful flowers. I have a few of them. That plant down there, those two down there, <clears throat> then down here. This one started sprouting first, so it's on its last leg. Um, then I have calendula. So this is the flower bed, which I will do, <clears throat> excuse me. There's a whole mosquito on my screen. <laughs> um, they try to do better differently next year, um, so. That's excited about that, the flower section. And look at that. So this was in here long before I decided to make this a flower bed. Oh, there's a coxcomb. I successfully grew a coxcomb. Uh, <laughs> there were plenty of those out here and I put some in the front yard and they're like quarter of the size of that one. But there's not a lot of sun in the front yard either. So that's probably half the problem. Um, all right, so over here, since we're doing full garden tours, is the compost pile. There's a bin, totes over there, um, a tote, I need more. And then there's the bin, which right now is at about a hundred. I think you can see that. Um, whoa, I got caught. Um, it's at about a hundred. Um, I would like it to get hotter. I'm still working on that. Uh, it rained a lot this week and I haven't turned it. So that might be a problem. Um, I'm gonna, I'm planning to turn it. <coughs> Excuse me, before the weekend ends. Um, these are my pot, my buckets uh, for fertilizer. So I make comfrey tea and I also have started playing around with weeds, like just throwing reeds in a bucket and letting them decompose because weeds have a lot of nutrients to them too. That's how they grow so big and strong. Um, and so, yeah, I also have coffee grinds that I get from Starbucks. I use that to kind of activate this compost pile. So like when I go to turn that today, I'll throw some of that in, throw some of the coffee grinds in there. And last but not least is my little chicken area. Um, so these cans have bedding and food and treats and things of that nature. Um, and so for my treats, I was offered a free bag of Grub Terra and they love it. And so I just keep buying it. <laughs> um, I have chick grit, 
um, because they are still chickens. They will be 16 weeks. I mean, chicks, they're still like young. Um, they'll be 16 weeks tomorrow. Um, so I haven't even gotten any eggs out of them. Um, and then their food is in here. They got one stowaway back here who will not get back in the coop. I'm gonna have to get it once I'm finished. Um, but I have four in my locality. The rule is you can have four chickens. And so I have four and I have this um, coop from Tractor Supply. Uh, it does its job. If you follow me on Instagram, you know how I feel about it. There are things that have fallen off. Um, there's something falling off of it right now, but I won't report it until it actually falls off. <laughs> <laughs> um, so thank you for watching um, if you haven't please like please subscribe um, share my page go find me on Instagram um, I'm just in a small suburban setting growing my food oh also I have a chroma grow uh, tunnel and I'm gonna have to try this again next year because the plant that I put in it uh, wasn't very healthy to start with. So I don't want to say that this isn't a good product because I know that what I put in it wasn't good. It was an extra plant. So, um, but go check their page out too um, on Instagram um, because from reading their things and looking at other people's tutorials and um, it seems like it's a good product. I just, I don't think I did it correctly to start with. Um, all right. Thank you. Bye.